Hi, thanks Daniel for the introduction. And uh, I'm Murphy from MIT. And uh, thanks organizer for offering me the opportunity to talk about our effort in uh, searching for hardware efficient bosonic quantum error correction code. Um, so what I mean by hardware efficient? Let me motivate uh, by bring, bring you back to 80 years ago uh, when a grad student, a very frustrated grad student from MIT was assigned by his professor Bush to uh, basically to uh, make this ad hoc uh, tabletop foosball looking uh, c computing engine called differential analog, uh, differential analyzer to work. The problem with this uh, computer engine is the, that they perform the integration and multiplication by the rotating of disk connected by shafts. But these shafts are very, very fragile and they can break in the middle of very long uh, computation. And Shannon's job initially was to design uh, electric switches to automate the, uh, the replacement of the broken disk. And uh, it turned out to be very hard and also it's very hard to prove that this machine is actually universal. Um, so while being frustrated, Shannon turned to uh, an opposite extreme. Instead of using the electric switches to uh, replace the shaft, how about I just use a switch to perform computation? And that's how he started the digital revolution. And so we can arguably think that the digital circuit design is triggered by Shannon's uh, insightful uh, way to solve error correction, which is to use trivial error correction. That's because it turned out that transistors are, uh, that are used for the digital circuit nowadays are very uh, highly robust against errors. Um, to be more specific, one out of a billion transistors uh, will fail on average each year. Uh, so, which means due to cosmic rays. Uh, so, uh, that's perfect, and, and that's how uh, Shannon uh, Digital Circuits uh, had a huge success. And now, fast forward uh, 80 years. We are at the area of designing the first generation of quantum computing. Um, instead of transistors, uh, we have uh, a, a variety of uh, quantum computing platform in translating the digital circuit design to the quantum circuit design. So th the problem with quantum computing is uh, among all uh, this variety of either photon, uh, merriman based photon, uh, photon, photon injection or the ion trap or the superconducting Joseph junction based qubits is um, all of them are very, very highly competitive with each other with regard to error. They're all very susceptible to errors and therefore we need very um, smart error correction scheme. And one of the most uh, groundbreaking work in this regard is the poly stabilizer framework, which everyone is very familiar with. Um, so, in the poly stabilizer formalism, we can have an arbitrary uh, and uh, k encode arbitrary k logical qubits by finding n minus k many stabilizers from the poly group operators that are mutually commutable. And then we can find the logical Z operators and to define the joint common logical basis state. And the correctable errors are those who anti-commute with the stabilizers. And we can therefore perform syndrome measurement on the controlled, uh, controlled logical uh, stabilizer measurements. Where here's the M, oops. The M is one of the stabilizers chosen that is anti-commute with the given error. And now we ask uh, how it performed in the bosonic quantum computation. So um, by bosonic quantum computation, I mean to use photon as the fo quantum information carrier. And 
For example, the logical basis, we can define it as a vacuum or the single excitation. Um, and, but the problem with photon commutation is photons are lossy and they are only weakly interacting with each other. So we, can, we have to use, um, for example, kernel linearity um, is required to have a inter uh, universal uh, bosonic quantum computing gates. And that means that we no longer have, uh, have arbitrary uh, syndrome measurement at our disposal. For example, uh, one of the most promising non demolition measurement using photon is realizing Rob Shakov's group um, to measure the photon num number parity. But this is only a very limited subset of our uh, syndrome measurements. So how to leverage this very limited measurement capability to design a bosonic error correcting code that are robust against uh, photon loss? More particularly, I ask, um, can we use the hardware feature of the quantum computing platform to simplify the error correction? And indeed, there is a playground that where we will uh, use the, this feature is the new Busani quantum computing scheme, where instead of the kernel linearity, uh, we only use the so-called three-way mixing interaction, which uh, is described by this G1 and G2, where um, the signal, signal modes, idler modes, and pump modes are coupled together, and signal and idler always come in pairs. Uh, so either a pump photon uh, get annihilated and create a pair of signal idler, or vice versa. And um, so we proved that in this paper that we can perform, we can realize universal quantum computing in any QDID basis with this um, three-way mixing Hamiltonian. And what is interesting is that um, the physical subspace, um, this uh, computing scheme, Lysian has a nice uh, symmetry property, which is the sum of the signal idler photon pair with the pump is a constant. So it's a natural consequence of the energy conservation. But moreover, uh, it is also uh, very uh, suitable for the measurements that we have at hand. So the advantage of this scheme include that the three-way mixing can increase the interaction strings compared with current linearity and is tunable. And, um, however, we cannot directly use the current uh, error correcting code because the, all of them are either based on the current nonlinearity or the measurement induced optical nonlinearity. And moreover, um, majority of them, uh, almost all of them have, to our knowledge, have uh, require n square many total photons to correct against n photon loss. And uh, we wonder, can we have a linear scaling error correction code, which means we can correct a constant fraction of photons. And that would be ideal for a large scale, um, either quantum communication channel or quantum computing with photons. So that's, a, some, that's the motivation of our work, which is three questions. Uh, one is, can we extend the existing poly stabilizer formalism to a larger class of error correcting code? And second is, can we design error correcting code based on the given uh, innate feature of the hardware? And lastly, can we find a linear scaling code that is suitable for scalable quantum computing using photons? So now let me introduce the symmetry operator formalism. Um, as an example, uh, in our chi 2 computing, uh, we choose an irreducible subspace of chi 2 Hamiltonian as a physical subspace, uh, which has the aforementioned symmetry of the total photon number conservation. And secondly, we find the measurable symmetry operator, 
what I mean by that is um, we find the measurement that can uh, be realizable and described uh, naturally supported by this physical subspace. So the first one is, is the single mode generalized photon number parity, um, which is described in matrix formulation, uh, it looked like a general uh, acuted basis Z operator, except the dimension here, n plus one, does not have to be a prime number. And when n equals to one, this is just the normal photon number parity measurement. And secondly, we can also produce two mode generalized photon number parity in experiments, where instead of measuring one mode, modulo n, we can perform non demolition measurement on the two mode of photon number modulo n. And this is described by a tensor product of the two Z operators. Oh, sorry. Um, second, thirdly, we can also permute the physical basis by simply relabeling the basis, uh, the bosonic mode's number. And then with the combination of permutation of the physical basis and the uh, measurement of photon number parity, we can also indirectly measure the photon number inversion symmetry, which corresponds to changing each number by n, the total photon number n minus original photon number. And finally, we can also conjugate this photon inversion symmetry with unitary transformation, for example, beam sphere transformation or other unitary uh, that can be easily implemented. So there are several properties of symmetry operator. First of all, um, the, we can choose a set of the symmetry operators who are mutually commutable. And moreover, all of the symmetry operator we mentioned before and, uh, do not commute with the bosonic annihilation and creation operator, which are the errors we want to correct. And lastly, uh, these symmetry operators are either monomial matrices or monomial matrices conjugated by unitary. And what do I mean by monomial matrices uh, is the matrix that can be decomposed into a permutation matrix time a diagonal matrix. So the feature of this matrix is uh, each line and column has only one non-zero element, and the product of the monomial matrices are still monomial matrices. So uh, we ask, can we use the symmetry operator formalism to design error correcting code? And here is an example of the Chi2 error correcting code based on the symmetry operators that is tailored for the Chi2 uh, bosonic quantum computing to correct boson, uh, bosonic annihilation and creation operator errors. And here's a, uh, before I go into the detail of the code, here's a table of the symmetry operators used for each code. As you, if you remembered, uh, they are exactly the commutable set of the symmetry operators I listed before. And the property of this three kind of code, uh, the first one is called Chi2 parity check code, is that the, they have a, it has a constant code rate, which is one over half. But the catch is it only corrects single photon loss and gain errors. And it uses a linearly number of photons. Um, and the, the second class is called Chi2 embedded error correcting code. Uh, the name came from we, use, we embed a single logical qubit with a two, two physical qubits. And it also achieve, it, uh, achieve a, a unity uh, code rate at uh, QD dimension goes to infinite. And the third one is the Chi2 binomial code, um, which use the symmetry operator of the binomial uh, beam splitter conjugated photon inversion number, uh, inversion symmetry. So let me introduce uh, the Chi2 parity check code and how we uh, constructed from the symmetry operators. And so before that, there's, I'd like to uh, list a couple advantage of the Chi2 parity check code. The first one, it has a constant code rate, and secondly, uh, it achieves a quantum Hamming bound. 
And lastly, we, uh, it's experimentally friendly where we provide all the universal gate set in an encoded basis as well as the detailed error correction uh, procedure. And I will not have time to go over the last point, but um, you can ask me uh, later and our paper will be on archive uh, tomorrow. Um, so let me, let's me see how we construct Chi2 parity check code. Um, first, so the goal of Chi2 parity check is to encode K logical Q did of Q, Q dimension into N logical or physical Q did of the same dimension. And let's take Q equals to three, which is a logical Q trait. And first, we enforce this uh, four pairs of um, Z operators to stabilize a three Q trait, a nine, uh, six Q trait into two Q trait subspace. And then we add the parity symmetry between the bosonic modes of different physical bases. Here, particularly, it's the pump mode of the first Q trait and the pump mode of the second Q trait. That will reduce our dimension from nine to five. And thirdly, we add the swap symmetry, which means the code should be invariant under swapping between the first and the second physical Q trait. And that would reduce, further reduce the dimension from five to four. And lastly, we add the photon number inversion symmetry, and that will eventually stabilize our code subspace to a Q trait uh, code. And here, oh, here is an example of the q code error correction condition, uh, where in order to detect errors, we perform the generalized photon number parity measurement on the sum of the, any two of the three bo uh, six bosonic modes and the sum of the three bosonic modes of the same physical q -trid. And that will uniquely identify the errors. Now, this, uh, we move on to the second kind, which is called Chi2 embedded error correcting code. Um, it has the asymptotic uh, code rate unity, and it also achieves the corresponding quantum Hamming bound, and we also have the corresponding uh, universal gate set and the error correction circuit. So, um, but here, we allow the logical qubit basis and physical qubit basis to be different. And take, take the logical qubit to be a qubit basis, for example. The smallest uh, qubit, physical qubit that we require is three, which is the smallest number larger than two. And then we can stabilize this code space from the three qubit basis with the two uh, Z operators. And then we need just one more symmetry operator to stabilize the logical qubit basis. And in this case, it's the photon number inversion operator. And finally, the most powerful code is the Chi2 binomial code. And it corrects uh, all photon number, uh, photon loss or gain error of the same order that is less than n using the linear number of photons. The disadvantage is we require additional channel monitoring on the total lost of photon excitations, and the encoding is more challenging to realizing experiment. And to construct the binomial code, uh, we first introduce a unitary transformation we call beam splitter transformation. It is inspired by the two-mode beam splitter transformation, where if we have a noon state and you send into a beam splitter, you get a superposition of fog basis with binomial coefficient. And using the symmetry property of the binomial coefficient, we design a symmetry oper a stabilizer of this form, which is a unitary, beam splitter unitary conjugating the photon number inversion symmetry followed by a parity uh, symmetry operator. And the logical basis stabilized by this symmetry operator uh, takes this form, which look very similar to the binomial code uh, in, uh, proposed by uh, Steve Gervin's group. 
However, in our case, it is a three modes uh, bosonic codes. And we'll show that the advantage of the symmetry operator allows us to generalize it to uh, arbitrary number of bosonic modes of arbitrary QLED dimension. So as an example of a Kaito binomial code here, th uh, this is a code to encode a logical qubit and to encode a, uh, to protect against any photon loss or gain error up to degree two and uh, uh, degree one uh, photon phase errors. And in order to correct against photon loss uh, up to three, we have another encoding which use uh, on average four photons. And as you notice that it's impossible to distinguish the, the loss of photon, a pairs of photon signal either from a single photon in pump because their energy are exactly the same and the basis will overlap. Therefore, we need additional uh, channel monitoring of the total number of lost photons. And then we also uh, calculate the corresponding quantum Hamming bound and it turned out that both chi parity check code and chi embedded error correction code achieve the corresponding error, uh, quantum Hamming bound. And the optimal core rate uh, for the chi error correcting code, uh, embedded error correcting code, is achieved at the logical q basis 8. So the advantage of using symmetry operator formalism are um, threefold. Firstly, um, we can use this, we can choose the symmetry to describe the, car, the given physical subspace symmetry and the measurement symmetry uh, measurement operator that at our disposal. In, our, in this case, it is the photon number parity symmetry. And secondly, it is convenient to use it to generalize from lower dimensional code to a higher dimensional code, and to generalize from, for example, three mode bosonic code to two mode or any other modes. And as an example, we can uh, also generalize the three modes encoding into a two mode encoding that correct, um, use linear photon number to correct n photon loss errors uh, with a given power of channel monitoring. And finally, um, since we, th we, propose, we claim that our method can, pre uh, can be advantageous in reducing the resource by tailoring our code design with the hardware features. We also uh, propose a hardware efficiency matrix where we can measure against our codes to see whether uh, the given proposal is more efficient. And for now, we characterize the hardware efficiency with the following six metrics. Uh, the first one is the incurred error mechanism introduced by the error correction process. Um, and the second one is the resource used for encoding, where the resource includes the measurements, the, the number of feedback and feedforward controls, and the type of controllable Hamiltonians. And third, and third one is the resource for decoding, and then the resource for error correction and resource for implementing universal gate set in the encoded basis. And also the code rate of the given error correcting code, meaning how efficient can you encode uh, logical qubits with the amount of physical qubits. And so we compare our chi error correcting code with one of the most uh, uh, appealing bosonic error correcting code proposed by Gottsman, Kitab, and Preskill, um, where it's also recently uh, evaluated by this work by Victor et al., uh, showing that the JKP code indeed have a great advantage, especially at the low photon loss uh, regime due to the tunability of the continuous variable. Um, so, we uh, in this table, we first compare the error mechanism where the photon loss error do not introduce logical errors in our encoding, but it does introduce uh, logical errors um, in the JKP code uh, due to the Gaussian embedded error. And 
the encoding resource for the JKP code include both the kernel linearity uh, and the incoherent uh, three-way mixing um, and linear optics. Uh, but our Chi2 error correcting code only require um, coherent uh, through a mixing process and the linear optics. And the decoding of the JKP code uh, have less requirement, uh, which only need homodyne linear optics and chi -to, co incoherent chi 2 interactions. But we require photon number resolving detection, which could be more uh, experimentally unavailable. And, uh, and the other f three requirements, I think they are very comparable. For example, the error correction resource, um, they only need, require ancilla state and homodyne, but we require generalized photon number parity measurement. And the encoded universality, um, the JKP code requires the uh, parity, photon number parity measurement, and, uh, but we only require the linear optics and chi 2 interactions. Um, so, in regard to code rate, um, we compare the photon loss channel uh, capacity of the JKP code with our uh, code rate defined by the N log Q divided by uh, B log K. Sorry, I didn't insert the formula here. But um, in order to have a fair comparison of the actual practical behavior, we need to um, perform numerical uh, simulation on the entanglement fidelity or the channel fidelity of uh, all three codes under the same error model. And that is ongoing work um, in collaboration with Victor and Kudru. So in summary, um, we proposed a symmetry operator stabilizer formalism and we use it to design uh, three kinds of Chi2 quantum error correcting code tailored for our Chi2 computing hardware. And we propose six uh, hardware efficiency matrices. And we hope that we could generalize the definition of symmetry operator uh, to include a broader class of error correcting code and to study the fault tolerance behavior of this symmetry operator formalism. And Moreover, we're interested to know the channel capacity of the Chi2 error correcting code uh, and the protocol that uh, use Chi2 error correcting code as a quantum repeater node. And lastly, uh, it'll be great to have a more quantitative measure of the hardware efficiency that uh, actually help experimentalists to decide uh, which quantum error correcting code will be useful. Thanks. And we thank Liang Jiang, Ted Yuder, Victor, Albert, and Kujuno for uh, enlightening discussions. Thanks.